drums begin to burn. Oh, when the begin to burn. Oh, Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the things go much in, in. Oh, when the stars God is good and all the time. We are very happy to see many of you here present this morning because yesterday not many of you were able to come for this Mass. And uh, as we gather here this morning, we want to pray for our nation that is crawling back to life after yesterday's uh, political uh, demonstrations. And we pray for the healing, because many are who dead. We hear that there are people who lost their lives. And it's not good for our country, so we need to pray for this nation, that our leaders may see the need to come together and talk peace for this nation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. God sent me before you to preserve life. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Judah went up to Joseph and said, Oh my Lord, let your servant, I beg you, speak a word in my Lord's ears. And let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man. We have a father, an old man, and a young brother, the child of his old age. And his brother is dead. 
and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes upon him. Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, Go again, buy us a little food, we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother goes with us, then we will go down. For we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. One left me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from me, and harm befalls him, you will bring down my gray, hair, my gray hairs in sorrow to Sheol. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh had it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, I beg you. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. But he called down a famine on the land. He broke their staff of bread. He had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. His feet were weighed down in chains. His neck was bound with iron. Until what he said came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. Then the king sent orders and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him master of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Remember the wonders the Lord has done. Gospel acclamation. at hand, repent and believe in the gospel. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his apostles, Preach as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, 
cast out demons, you received without pay, give without pay. Take no gold, no silver, no copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, no two tunics, no saddles, no a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay with him until you depart. As you enter the house, salute it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I say to you, it shall be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. the gospel of the Lord. There is apparent contradiction in the gospel because we read you received without pay give without pay and further down that whatever house you enter into, eat and drink what is offered to you, for a laborer deserves his wages. So I posed a question to myself from last evening up to this morning, very early this morning at around 4 a.m. What is this that we have received without pay and we must give without pay? And the solution is provided in the first reading we've taken this morning. If you follow the gracious words of Judah, you realize how he cajoled his young brother, Joseph. He called him Lord, and he referred to the rest of his siblings as his servants. He called him Pharaoh, realizing that their lives were in his hands, for they had sold him as a slave into Egypt. And when Joseph listened to the pleading of his brother, he gave in and disclosed that he was the one they sold and forgive them and told them this God sent me here ahead of you so that I could preserve life he forgave God has granted us many gifts gratuitously that we have not deserved in any way the most important of them all is forgiveness of our sins The psalmist invites us to recall the orders of God in our lives. And I want to recall with you this morning what happened during the Last Supper. The last meal Jesus ate when he was here on earth together with his disciples. In that supper, he blessed bread and told them, Take it and eat it, for this is my body which is going to be given up for you. After that, he offered thanks, offered them the cup and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which seals the covenant between God and his people. It is going to be poured out for the forgiveness of sins of many people. Matthew chapter 26 from 20, verse 26 to 27. 
Jesus paid for our sins on the cross with his most precious blood. He was the efficacious, adequate sacrifice that could pacify man and God. You've been forgiven without you asking for it or deserving it. Discuss with yourself for the next two minutes how well you are disposed when it comes to forgiving those who have offended you and accepting forgiveness from those you have longed. Offer to you. Said I, Lord God of all creation, for from you and us have received the bread we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is through light and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him. Through Christ our Lord, through him, the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble place as we all acclaim. upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was added, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O oh Lord. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you, offered us, that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, the first, our Pope, Philip Agnolo, our Archbishop, his auxiliary, Bishop David Kamau, and all the clergy and these lovely children you've gathered here before you this morning. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We welcome them into the light of your face, half mass on us. So we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father who art in heaven, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation, in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. God is good and all the time. I hope my poses during the Mass don't bother you because they are intended and they have a place in the celebration of liturgy. 
and in the structure of our masses, okay? So every time we say, let us pray, we pause. Because I don't know what you, to tell, what you want to tell God. Isn't it? And you must say something that relates to you in the context of the mass that we have celebrated. I now want to bless you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.